I believe very strongly that we need a different kind of dialogue and discuss about our, different, uh, about our dear country, Cameroon. We need a dialogue that captures the diversity of the country's past and draws lessons from the failures and challenges of the present to chart a course for the future. As we begin that process, let me highlight four key areas on which we must focus as a matter of urgency. One, the Cameroonian youth. Our country's track record is abysmal with how we have dealt with our youth. In my humble opinion, issues pertaining to Cameroon's youth are going to be resolved not by some dictat from above or by slogans or some sporadic measures for short-term gratification. Our youth are going to have to be empowered to sit at the table and have their voices heard so they become part of the process of finding solutions. That is the essence of giving them ownership of their destiny and guaranteeing sustainability in their engagement, both on the economic and sociopolitical development fronts. The second area which I think we need to focus on to sustain our democratization process is the management of human capital and natural resources. There is no denying that one of our country's greatest assets is its people. Their resilience and hard work, their determination to succeed, and their dynamism. And yet, we must do more to create an environment in which each Cameroonian can contribute his or her quarter to national development and feel appreciated for it. Although Cameroon has one of the best endowed primary commodity economies in sub-Saharan Africa, it still faces serious problems such as a top heavy civil service and a generally unfavorable climate for business enterprise, according to the 2009 Index Mundi. Beginning in June 2000, the government undertook an IMF-sponsored three-year structural adjustment program, or HIPIC program, just as the World Bank recommended several reforms in the area of budget transparency, privatization, and po poverty reduction programs. Many Cameroonians are still awaiting the benefits of the completion point. Many Cameroonians have still to sense an impact or an improvement in their well-being. And to many of us, the manner in which the privatization of state corporations was undertaken, Cameroon Airlines, the Railway Corporation, even the CDC, has not contributed to the emergence of a Cameroonian middle class, as we may have hoped. How many new Cameroonian shareholders do we have today as a result of the privatization process. The third pillar that I think is necessary for our, our democratization process has to do with the redefining Cameroon's place on the African continent. Amongst the many assets that we have as a country is our geography, our history, and our heritage. Our location at the crossroads of Africa, between North and South, East and West. Our religious affinities, capable of relating to both the Islamic world to the North and the Christian and animist world to the South. Our heritage, our rich heritage and culture that at its best would combine traditions that embody the rectitude of the Anglo-Saxon and the dynamism of the Francophone and the linguistic diversity that allows us to become the quintessence of a world that is becoming increasingly bilingual. Why haven't we as a country 
transformed any of these assets into marketable commodities. On my bilingualism as a marketplace product, I believe at launching at some point in the not too distant future, an initiative that could allow Cameroon to train and send Francophones to teach French in English speaking countries such as Nigeria and Ghana and Sierra Leone and you name it, while sending Anglophones to do same in French speaking countries, many of which surround us. Let me conclude with the fourth pillar, which for me I think is one of the most relevant because this is how this conversation came about. On the role of the diaspora. The number of Cameroonians in the diaspora has risen exponentially in the last two decades. Worldwide, some figures estimate that about 800,000 Cameroonians live outside of the country. The record also shows that this diaspora is made up of law-abiding, talented, highly educated, and competent professionals. The Cameroonian diaspora has become part of the global community of expertise, not only on the issues of democratic governance that plague our own country and continent, but also in the thematic sectors of health, the environment, education, engineering, private sector in development, etc. that are needed to drive and sustain both economic and political development. These are the informal and indeed very effective ambassadors of Cameroon on a daily basis in the communities in which they live and within the organizations that they serve. The diaspora must enhance its role because we have the assets to make an impact. And four very solid assets come to mind. There is the expertise and the knowledge that the diaspora has acquired over time. And we see many Cameroonians thriving in their respective fields. Secondly, they are the relationships and the networks that Cameroonians have built around the world. The third asset that the diaspora has is this unique ability to be privileged intermediaries in a world that's becoming increasingly a global village. The fourth asset the master of ceremony referred to is the economic asset and the whole question of remittances. And I know that in countries such as Mexico and the Philippines, the remittances from the diaspora are incorporated as part of the national public budget that is debated every year. Because these countries have integrated the contribution, the economic contribution of the diaspora into their public finance uh, policy making. The World Bank estimates that the Cameroonian diaspora sends to Cameroon on a yearly basis an average of $300 billion. That is more than Cameroon receives from any one of its bilateral partners. I want to thank you profusely for your time and your attention and hope that the conversation and dialogue will continue. Thank you very much.